what had been statistical before now becomes at least partly deterministic. What was statistical before now becomes at least partially deterministic. What was statistical before? The wave function of the double slit experiment. Now, why is it deterministic? We can actually figure out where the particle really is. If you want to think about terms of particle physics, you would say the wave function says we don't know where the particle's at. We can figure out where it's at. You're like, wait, how does that make sense? Because it can be anywhere. Exactly. It can be anywhere. We can figure out where it's at, put it wherever we want. That's the basis for macroscopic quantum tunneling. Macroscopic teleportation. Once we've figured out how we, move, how we put it wherever we want, then we just have to encase it in a bubble, make the universe think it's an electron. So once we've figured out how to put an electron from one location to the next, move it wherever we want by manipulating the Schrodinger equation through scalar physics, through quantum mechanics, then all we have to do is scale it up. Scale it up to any size we want, and we can manipulate the Schrodinger equation for it. So they've probably understood how to teleport something since at least the 70s or 80s, since at least they understood scalar physics. When did they actually engineer how to do it in real life? Harder to say. Probably in the 2000s, maybe in the 90s. They probably knew about it before then, but to actually produce something that can do it is a different story. I published a paper where he had successfully united electrical field and gravitational field in a common unified theory. To do that, he had to add another physical dimension. And a very strange thing emerged. There's really only one field in nature if you're looking at that hyperspace. It is the five-dimensional gravitational field. And it intersects our world in two things. One thing we call the electromagnetic field, and the other thing we call the gravitational field in the general sense, general relativity, the ability to curve and warp and twist space-time itself. So we added one more space dimension, which we do not see. Klein, a few years later, explained what happened to that dimension. It's really rolled up around every little point in our space. We add another dimension that we don't see. It's technically rolled up in every point in our space. We can't see the dimension, but it's there. Just like with this book. We live on the surface of this book, but all this exists. We just can't see it. This is exactly how the ether works. This ether is here. We just don't see it. But we can do this. We can create a shortcut between those two points because once we know this ether exists, let me go full screen. Once we know this ether exists here, we can engineer it. How? The Schrodinger equation, what I just told you. How do we know where the particle is in this? That's what Tom Bearden just said. Tom Bearden said, with scalar physics, we can engineer the location of the particle. We can see where the particle is going to be and determine where it's going to go. But the, the theory languished for many years until really about the early to mid-70s when the new symmetries in the forefront of physics and particle physics began to see that with that type of geometry, you could get in all these weird particles and you could get in all the forces. You really could begin to approach a unified theory of all forces of nature. And the physicists became very excited. But with that thing and supergravity, you can get in all of the particles and everything we know into physics in a single unified theory. The plane represents our ordinary world. The hand represents an extra dimension. So it's that fifth dimensional uh, geometry that uh, Calusa came up with. And I Look at that image right there. Perfect, perfect, right? And here's the thing too. Now that we understand that we are on this flat surface, but there's this extra dimension that we don't see. Well, where's the energy coming from? The energy's coming from this extra dimension we don't see. This is where electricity is coming from, guys. We think it's we think the energy is flowing through the wires on the surface of this uh, this book, 
The energy is coming from this. Therefore, it's coming from all around us, everywhere. Doesn't this just, like, this is the answer. This is where energy comes from. This is where electricity comes from. I mean, um, this is why we have entanglement. This is how we can teleport something. Einstein himself would agree with me. Why? Because he's the guy that invented the Einstein-Rosen bridge. This is an Einstein-Rosen bridge. Einstein predicted gravity waves. This is a gravity wave. <laughs> this is a gravity wave, chat. Space-time bending. Einstein was the guy that said space-time is a thing. Einstein is the guy that predicted gravity waves that we only publicly detected in 2015. 2015 is when we first realized this is real from a public perspective. Technically, people knew about it for decades. But this is the answer. Unification has been figured out since 1921, 1926. People throw out different name, times. 1920, 1919, 1921, 1926, whatever it is. Anybody else figuring it out now in 2025? You got to go study your history. Go study your history. Now, if we need more elaborate explanations, great. This is good enough for me. I'm a normal guy. I do healthcare IT. This is a good enough explanation for me. I don't need a bunch of quaternion math or like matrices with 50 numbers on it so that we can, you know, figure out all the vectors and what have you. Look, I get it. Boom. Ether. Gotcha. I'm with you. I'm with you. We're in a sea of energy. We extract that energy. We can make a wormhole, warp drive, whatever we want to do. Simple. 1921. The hand itself represents that fifth dimensional gravitational field, which intersects our world in two fashions. One electromagnetic shown by the forefinger extended, that intersection, and the other by the thumb, which is our gravitational field, as we see it in the little intersections. And both of the intersections, by the way, at the same point. They are not spatially separated. But notice what we do if we deliberately zero the electromagnetic intersection, which is what we're doing when we make the zero. But we control what goes into the zero. We can put energy in there, or we can take the energy out. Wow. This is a great clip. I, haven't, I should have shown this clip way more. So what is he saying there? Okay, if I make a scalar, if I make my cancellation beam, then what am I doing? Again, it's a scalar is just a magnitude. So there's no vector for it. It's not going in any direction. Where is it going? Into the ether. It's going into the ether. When you're making a scalar wave, you're making a scalar beam of energy going into the ether. He said, if you do this, you can put energy in there or you can pull energy out. Now we're talking about entanglement. Now we're talking about entanglement. So what are they orbs doing MH370? They're putting the energy into the ether and they're going to pull that energy out. I really don't want to be on that plane. When we do that, it's coming in and out of the thumb as gravitational energy and directly as curvature of space time. I can provide the direct conversion of electromagnetic energy into gravitational field energy or vice versa. Now, if you want to do any gravity, gentlemen, there it is. We can warp, engineer, and twist space-time at will, as we wish, in whatever pattern we wish. I mean, booyah. What does it look like to manipulate space-time? What would a gravity wave even look like to us? I mean, oh, here it is. Yep, there it is right there. Well, that's what it looks like. We've always wanted to know, okay, well, what would that look like? Well, there it is. It's pretty haunting, man. It's pretty haunting. That plane literally just vanishes out of the sky, and it looks like it was never even there. Looks like it was never even there. That's what it looks like. There you go. You want it from another angle? There you go. Second angle. Literally, the clouds are barely even impacted. The only thing we get is a little flash of light, a little flash of X-ray, gamma, or ultraviolet light, something beyond the... the uh, optical spectrum, a non-radiative, non-heat, not hot emission of, of light. That's all we get. <laughs> and the plane's just gone. Looks like it went through a mirror. It looks like the mirror, there was a secret mirror there and it just disappeared. Why does it look like that? 
it looks like that because we're manipulating space time. We're creating a scalar potential that's bloop, sucking that plane somewhere else. This is only possible if there's an ether, if there's an extra dimension of energy. Why? Because that plane disappearing here at the end, that is definitely not using this huge amount of energy that everybody says we need for a wormhole. The amount of energy released right there looks like a little, like a little blip. It's like nothing. It's like no energy is being released and that plane's just gone. That tiny little flash of light, that was like a little firecracker. So that right there proves free energy is real. That proves what Tom Bearden was saying. And this also proves the videos are real too from a scientific perspective because this is what Tom Bearden is saying is that we can tickle the vacuum with this little bit of little bit of input and we can get this these huge effects out of it. He's saying we can create an over unity system easily by interacting with this energy. And that's exactly what they did to the plane. They interacted with the energy in a way where they just bloop, blipped it somewhere else, blipped it somewhere else.